Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at this position. It is white to move and to draw this game. You need to draw this. So feel free to pause the video for a while to try to figure out the answer on your own. Then we're gonna discuss the different variations. Okay, welcome back. Now, taking this bishop will not help in any kind of way because black is threatening to promote this pawn. And after he gets a queen, this is losing for us. Okay, so we don't take the bishop. Getting the king closer does not help because he can just promote. So it's very clear right from the beginning that we have to make some kind of a forcing move. We cannot play, unfortunately, rook to g5 to stop the pawn because the bishop can just take it. So again, forcing move is required. Playing this check, I mean, we have two forcing moves, either rook to f5 check, rook to d8. Rook to d8 is not good at all because it could be attacked. And actually, that's got to be actually a really good move because then we can play a rook here. And we're actually uh, stopping the pawn from promoting. So after, uh, this is not the good move. For example, here, king to f7. Just stopping this rook from going to g8 to stop the pawn. After another check, I guess the king just keeps moving. And after a series of checks... Uh, possibly here the rook can be attacked the rook cannot go here because the bishop is defending that square the rook is being attacked after rook takes there will be a queen promotion so it's definitely not this move because the king can just get closer and then promote after that so of course we are left with the only move which is rook to f5 check now black has two options here either to go to the G file or the E file. Okay, let's see first what happens if he went to the G file. It doesn't matter if he played king to G7 or king to G8. The exact same thing. So let's see king to G8. Sorry, king to G7. The same thing. We cannot play this check to win the pawn because the bishop is still defending. So now what do we do here is that we try to play king to H3. The point of king to h3, that we're going to try to win this pawn, and we're going to win it. And he cannot promote to a queen, because then we can sacrifice the rook. That's a really beautiful move. Now, if he takes with the bishop, or he takes with the queen, it does not matter. The king and pawn cannot move. So if bishop takes, we cannot go here, we cannot move because of the, the queen. And the same thing after check and queen takes. The exact same thing. We cannot move, that's going to be a stalemate. Okay, so he cannot go to the G file because that's going to be a king h3 and then we sack the rook. And after, for example, king here, king h3, he did not promote. He just attacked or whatever. That's actually a really good move. But I totally believe the exact same thing is going to happen. For example, we play, we play a rook to f3. Uh, he makes a queen. We give a check. He takes and takes. But this is still a draw. This pawn will not help, unfortunately because the pawn is on the side of the board not to mention that this bishop is a dark square bishop that's going to be able to stop the pawn okay so this if he went to the g file either g8 you know g7 or g8 now what happens if he went to the e file king e7 or king e8 the exact same thing now what do we do we cannot play rook to g5 to stop the pawn from promoting because of the obvious bishop here still and we need to do something about this pawn, so we have to make a forcing move again, which is a rook check. Now here, it really does not matter where the king actually goes. f6, d6, I don't think it actually matters. For example, king to f6, attacking our rook. Here we have to find another beautiful move for white to try to draw this game. And that is to try to stop this pawn from pushing. And the only move to do so is to play rook to e1, sacrificing the rook. Now, if he did not take it, for example, move the king or whatever, we just play a simple rook g1 and we win the pawn. Right? That's very simple. But if he takes with the bishop, that's a check. As you can see, we have three options. Either h3, h3 g4, or h5. These two moves actually lose because he can promote. But the best move here is to play king to h3. 
you might say, well, now we allow him to have a queen. But when he does so, that's actually a stalemate. We cannot move. And the exact same thing if he promoted to a rook. The exact same thing. The king cannot move. Okay, but you might say, a knight in a bishop endgame versus a king is actually winning. So black promotes to a knight. But the problem with this move, we can, we're not going to go here. We're going to play king to, uh, to, to g2 to attack the knight. The only safe square for the knight is to go to e2. Then we play king to f1, attacking both of these two pieces. And then he saves one of them, it doesn't matter which. We take the other one, that's a clear draw. One piece is not enough to win the game. But you might say, he's not going to promote to a knight, he's going to promote to a bishop. Well, look, in this kind of endgame, where black, for example, has two opposite color bishops, it's going to be a win for black. It's going to be a win against the king. But the problem here, both of these two bishops are dark square. So they cannot trap the king. So, for example, let's, you know, see that if this bishop, like, for example, it was on e4, and the other bishop on d4. So these two bishops are covering a lot of squares, you know, a lot of squares. So they can trap the king in between those lines, but only if they were a light square bishop and a dark square bishop. But the problem with this, both of them are dark square bishops, so they will not be able to actually trap the king. The king is not enough to do so, right? And that's going to lead to also another draw. Hopefully you enjoyed this puzzle and you managed to solve it. I'll see you again with another one.